The seas that surround our planet cover over 70% of the Earth's surface. The Pacific Ocean alone wraps its way around half the globe. You could fly over it for 12 hours non-stop and see nothing more than a speck of land isolated in a world of water. The oceans make up over 97% of the Earth's inhabitable space and the sheer number of marine animals it contains far exceeds that which inhabits the land. It's no wonder then that animals that lived on the land decided to return to the water to search for this almost inexhaustible supply of food. And as a result, some of these individuals evolved into some of the biggest and most intelligent animals on the planet. A male humpback whale sings to attract a female. His song is an elaborate chorus of low and high frequencies that can be heard up to 3,000 kilometers away. This male has traveled thousands of miles from the feeding grounds of the Atlantic waters that surround the polar regions of the Antarctic right the way down to the feeding grounds of the Pacific Ocean. Both male and female humpback whales vocalize, but only males produce the long, loud, complex song for which the species is famous. Each song may typically last over 20 minutes. And some individuals may sing continuously for over 24 hours. This male's continuous singing and perseverance is about to pay off. A female humpback whale is close by. And she's been listening to the song very carefully. She has recently departed from last year's calf and is ready to conceive again. The male falls silent and begins to follow her. He may sing to her again, but not if he feels that other males are within the vicinity. They start to get to know one another. But their courtship is about to be cut short. A group of rival males have detected that something is going on. They arrive in force and pursue the female with intent of winning her affection. The first male will have to prove his dominance if he is to stay with her. Each male tries to get alongside the female and intimidate the others. These 35 ton males are set to fight. They smash into their rival's flanks and bellow at one another. Most of this is just for show. No one succumbs to any real injuries. Some of the individuals in this group are smaller adolescent males. They've met their match and begin to retreat. As quickly as it began, it's all over. The first male is the biggest and he has triumphed. He will stay by her side until she's ready to conceive the next generation. It's dawn. 
These are the northeastern waters that surround Palito Bay. And far out to sea, excitement is stirring. are bottlenose dolphin. Like most oceanic dolphins, they travel in huge herds containing many different families. Like all predators that roam these seas, they seek parts of the ocean where food is at its most abundant. They can travel up to 100 miles in a single day. There's seldom enough prey to feed such numbers, so smaller groups leave the superpod and set out on hunting expeditions. This group will be away from the main herd for several hours. They're heading for the small islands just off the coast. These isolated sea mounts can create oases where life can flourish. But all the creatures that this attracts would not be here were it not for one key factor. The deep ocean currents. Far below the surface, these currents collide with the island's flanks and force upwards from the depths a rich soup of nutrients. In return, this rich supply of food attracts large quantities of fish. These filter feeders will sieve out the small particles of algae and plankton that has been brought up by the currents. These are the fish that the dolphins are looking for. The dolphins have detected the schooling fish from hundreds of meters away and begin to track them down using their sonar. These fish have already sensed the dolphin's approach through vibrations in the water. Their only means of defense is to attempt to huddle together in safety and await the approaching predators. For the hunted, there are few places to hide. The dolphins begin to swim around the fish, herding the shoal in upon itself, forcing it into a bait ball. They drive the shoal upwards so that it will be trapped against the surface waters. Now it's time to collect the rewards for all this effort. Dolphins have had their fill. Valuable food like this will not go to waste in the oceans. Before long, this carcass will start to sink into the darkness of the deep sea, but even there, its flesh will not be wasted. As it descends into the depths, it enters a dark and dangerous world. This is the Twilight Zone. 500 meters down, and even in the clearest tropical waters, only the faintest vestige of sunlight remains. So little, in fact, that few animals can detect it. This is the perfect environment for specialist hunters.
in this twilight, an animal needs to see, and yet, as far as possible, must avoid being seen. These scavenger fish are masters in the game of hide and seek. They have the large sensitive eyes for seeking prey, but their sides are highly silvered. This enables them to reflect the small glimmers of blue light from the surface and they can almost completely disappear into the gloom. But there is one predator here that they cannot hide from. These are orcas, or more commonly referred to as killer whales. A mother and her calf hunting in the cold, dark depths of the Pacific Ocean. She is teaching her calf the key hunting techniques that it will need in order to survive as an adult. You might think that at these depths, these animals would be completely blind. But they don't rely on their eyes to hunt for prey. They use their sonar. As they swim, they fire high frequency clicks into the water that are reflected back when the sound wave strikes an object. Anything within half a kilometer will be immediately detected. These scavenger fish are easy targets. Once this mother and calf are satisfied, they will return to the surface waters to rejoin their pod. Just off the coast of the Palomino Highlands, the rest of the pod are awaiting the return of the mother and her youngster. These killer whales are using their sonar in a rather different way. Instead of being used for hunting, they are using it as a form of echolocation. This is an important element to help enable these animals to navigate the vast expanses of the open ocean. It also allows them to guide separated individuals back to the herd. But far below, the mother is in a desperate situation. The calf has been below the surface for over 10 minutes and it's in desperate need of a breath. The mother is aware of this and does her best to hurry it along. If the calf is brought to the surface too quickly, then gas bubbles will begin to develop in its bloodstream and body tissues. This can cause irreparable damage and can sometimes be fatal. This is commonly referred to by scuba divers as the bends. The mother must be careful. Now that the pod is reunited, they begin to strengthen their social bonds with one another. For the youngster, this has been a valuable life lesson that it will never forget. Our planet is a blue planet. The sheer scale of the oceans dwarfs the land, and so far we have explored less than 5% of it. We as humans are having a profound effect on the seas that scientists are only now beginning to understand. 
What we cannot know is what kind of oceans these animals will be inhabiting in a few hundred years to come. This blue world may be about to get just a little bit bigger.